welcome back to another video and today we'll be working january 2022 paper 2 question 10 which is the last question in this series and this question comes from the section vectors and matrices and it says three points o p and r are shown in the grid below where o is the origin and it says write the position of r in the form a b so what we know is that our point from a b would come from our x axis and our point from B would come from our Y axis. So therefore looking at our graph, it would be five from our X axis and one from our Y axis. So therefore position vector is five, one. Part two says another point Q is located in such a way that QR is equal to two negative four and it says using this information plot the point q on the graph so you could either use a formula or you could use some inference because since this is r and we're looking for some point q and if we moved from q to r we went two spaces to the right which meant that we were going one two so therefore Q is somewhere along this line because we move somewhere from Q one, two spaces to the right to arrive at the point R. But we also move two, four spaces downwards. So it would have been, we're counting to be one, two, three, four. So Q would be somewhere along this point. So I'm using this point where they intersect here to be Q. So this point is where Q is, which is two spaces to the right, one, two, and then four spaces down, one, two, three, four. So this would be our point at Q, which would be three, five. So I didn't say write it, uh, or it just says plot the point. If you're using the equation QR to have therefore been QO plus OR is equal to QR. So what this would have been is a negative QO because it is not going in the OQ format. So it is QO plus OR. We know what OR is, which was 5, 1. is equal to qr which they gave us as two negative four so if we're now solving so qo is therefore equal to two negative four minus five one and that would be equal to two minus five that would give us a negative three and negative four minus one, that will give us a negative five. And remember that this is a negative QO. So therefore, in dividing through by negative one, what we'd get is three, five as the coordinates for Q. And then we'd have thus went ahead and plotted it, which is the same thing using the inference that we did from here. Part three now says determine the magnitude of QR. So when we're looking at the magnitude of a vector, what it is basically looking at is the square root of the sum of the squares of each vector component, the individual vector component. So what that would look like is, so if we're looking at the magnitude of QR, have been equal to the square root of the square of each individual vector component. So it would have been two square plus negative four square. So therefore, the magnitude QR is therefore equal to the square root and two squared would be four plus negative four squared would be 16. And we can see where this is going. So therefore, QR 
is equal to the square root of 20. When you put that in your calculator, what you'll get, the so QR is therefore equal to 4.47 units. And that would be our answer for part three, the magnitude of QR, 4.47. Part four now, it asks us show by calculation that OPQR is a parallelogram. So we're looking at OPQR being a parallelogram. So what we know is that with a parallelogram, they're usually equal in length. So the sides, the parallel sides are usually equal in length. So therefore what we're going to do is to one, prove that the sides are equal in length, which would mean that they are parallel. So, uh, we know what QR is. We know the magnitude of QR because that is what we just solved, which was 4.47. So if we are looking at OP, so let's look at OP. So what OP would have been, OP would have been equal to, so the point from Q should have been, negative two four so let us find the magnitude of this and we just look at the formula using the magnitude so op equal to the square root of the individual vector component. So it would have been negative two square plus four square. So therefore, OP would be equal to the square root, oh, this is a negative two negative sign didn't go so yes it would have been negative two which would have been four plus four square is 16. so we see that we're actually heading in the same direction as when we found the magnitude for qr so therefore op is equal to the square root four plus 16 that would give us 20 and we don't have to use our calculator again because we just found this on the other page so therefore, this would give us the same 4.47 units. So we can see that the magnitudes are equal. And so that is the magnitude, same 4.47. And QR is equal to 2, negative 4. OP is equal to negative 2, 4. So we can see that these sides, they are basically... are multiples of each other so two negative four negative two four so therefore we can go ahead and say that op is parallel to q r and you could have left it there but also you could have went further and found or and pq so let's say um O R that would have been five one. So if we're looking at it, O R would have been which we found in part one of the question five one. And if we're looking at P to Q, it would have been one, two, three, four, five across. Same thing, one up. So P Q would have been the same thing which is five, one. So if you should go ahead and find the magnitude, it would be the same units of length as well. So therefore, both OR and PQ are parallel and equal, and the same thing with QR and OP. So they are both parallel and they are equal in length.
part B now, it says calculate the values of X and Y in the matrix equation shown below. So this is a two by two matrix. So what we can do is to say one times negative four, that will give us negative four plus five times two, that will give us 10. And then one times one, that would give us one. And five times nine, that would give us 45. And two times negative four, that would give us negative eight. Y times two, that would give us two Y. And two times one, that would give us two. And nine times Y, that would give us nine Y. And that is being equal to this. So it is X, six, 46, and 65. Our brackets. So what we'll have now is negative four plus 10, that would give us six. This would be about the same negative 8 plus 2y since there's an unknown here and 1 plus 45 that would give us 46 and 2 plus 9y that would be the same as there is an unknown so give us back the same 9y and that is equal to the same x 6 46 65. So from this, we can now start equating. So what we can see is that x is equal to 6. So that's the first thing that we can solve. x is equal to 6. Now, from these two unknowns, we can use either one of these equations to solve for the value of y. I'm going to use both to show you that it would be the same thing. So we have negative 8 plus 2y, that would be equal to 6. So therefore, 2y is equal to 6 plus 8. 2y would be equal to 14. And therefore, y is equal to 14 divided by 2. And we can see where we're going here. Therefore, y is equal to 7. If we're using the other equation, which is 2 plus 9y, is equal to 65 and what we're saying is therefore is that 9y is equal to 65 minus 2 and therefore 9y is equal to 63 and therefore y would be equal to 63 divided by 9 and y is equal to 7 so therefore the values for x and y x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 7. Part C, it says a transformation T represented by the matrix maps S onto S prime, describe fully the single transformation for T. So if we are looking here, uh, so let's say this is our quadrant. So first object two, five. So let's say two, five. So this is S and the other one is five, two. So let's say five, two and S prime. If you can see that it is basically a flip or a reverse of the coordinates for both the object and the image. So 2, 5, 5, 2, so the x value become the y, the y value become the x. What you're taught or what it is, is that this is basically uh, the transformation being happening through the origin. So it is through the line where y is equal to x. So it's like a mirror line taking place that flips the object. So therefore, the single transformation that you're describing is that T represents a reflection in the line Y equal X. So you can see it's just a flip of the object and image point. So therefore, what you're writing is T represents a reflection in the line y is equal to x this is a theory so thank you for joining us
Thank you for watching. Please share with a friend to share with another friend so that we can all be prepared for it. So we'll see you in another video.